here we are back again, and it's my pleasure. Juliet's been on the show before. Uh, Juliet King and her, she comes from a family of uh, theater people, right? Yes. How yes, wonderful. I do. Yes. And Michael Lake way over there, I'm sorry, and uh, Jenny Pines in the middle here. Uh, and we're going to be talking about Shakespeare. And these are young people in Shakespeare. This is incredible. I love to see people get excited about Shakespeare. I do too. It yeah. is wonderful. And you're directing it? I am directing. And what's so good about the Twelfth Night? Why um, is it different than the 11th or the 13th? <laughs> <laughs> well, funny enough, uh, in Twelfth Night, the, the name, it's also, or what you will, the name really has no relevance whatsoever <laughs> to, uh, to the play itself. Uh, but what I love most about it is that it is probably Shakespeare's funniest comedy. It's just straight comedy. Uh, there's no internal, interior, all underlying themes or motives or anything. It's just come nobody out gets killed. Nobody gets killed. It's just come on out and have a good time with it. Right. And that's right. what I like about it. And it's sort of like uh, the French farce, but only in Shakespeare's right. time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. It just keeps snowballing until the very end when it all just explodes. Now I know we got Jenny here with uh, her. Um, uh, yeah, with her uh, names, and she's got two names for the show. So, who are you? What are you playing? <laughs> well, uh, I play Viola. Um, she is my character throughout the entire play, um, but she disguises herself as Cesario so that she well, basically can survive <laughs> throughout the entire play. If you think about Shakespearean's time and the role of women during that time in society, um, a woman doesn't. She's not really uh, smiled upon or can or is relied upon to uh, take care of herself. So she ends up in this new land that she's not really familiar with. And the only way that she can think of to survive is to dress up as a boy oh. and serve this noble duke, which causes all sorts of chaos. <laughs> <that way. laughs> I would imagine that it, it could possibly do that. We just happened to see the movie Albert Knobs, which was about... Uh, you know, a, a woman that is a man for, right. because she can't get a job or something in, right. in Victorian time. Yep. So we can understand that. And I do understand that in Shakespeare's time, many of the parts originally were just all played by men. Well, played by men, which is probably why you find so many women dressing up as men in yeah. Shakespeare's time. There are yeah. several plays that, you know, you run across that. Yeah. And partly that, that is because, right, because right. there were men playing women's parts. Made it easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, Michael, are you... We're dressing up in women's clothing or what? <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, the Duke. The Duke is rather regal. <laughs> okay. I don't think he'd be caught in women's clothing. <laughs> he actually uh, makes it a pretty big point that uh, um, that Vi Viola's character uh, as Cesario will remain Cesario until she's in women's clothes again. Uh. So you know, he's very he's very proper when it comes to that type of thing. Now, was it hard to learn? Uh, have you played in Shakespeare before? Uh, yeah, yeah, a bunch You of have, times. both of you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Okay, was it difficult in the beginning, think back, to learn the way Shakespeare is said? Because it's got definitely. a different feel, yeah, although definitely. when you see Shakespeare perform in, quote, modern times, mm -hmm. you know, where they'll change the setting, it seems to work. It, it translates really well, um, and and to go back to your the original question, yes, it, it, it's it's difficult. It's almost a different language, you know. And uh, not only is cadence and and sentence structure different, but a lot of times there's references that you can't hope to really fully grasp and understand unless you do the work. Colloquialisms the of the era, and everything, yeah. right, right. Um, and, and I mean, for me, it's gotten to the point where it's. Oh, okay, yeah. After sitting with the script for a couple of weeks, you're like, oh, I know, I know what I'm saying, kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, and then you know, as the show progresses, I mean, for myself, you know. Well, you know. I know whenever I've read Shakespeare, I always have to read it annotated, or not, you know, with the footnotes. <laughs> the footnotes. Right. Oh, what does that mean? Oh, that's what that means. Oh, that's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> one of those things. Yeah, I've absolutely loved Shakespeare ever since I was little. My mom actually gave me one of those, uh, the full collection of Shakespeare, the little books of Shakespeare. So since I was about eight or nine I've been in love with this and like all of his different play? plays um, oh god there's a lot of them this I will admit is one of my favorite plays the 12th uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love it for the fact that you know just the disguises and the masks that you get to wear and it's just really comical with all the <laughs> trouble that not only myself but my twin brother decides to get me into <laughs> and well, all the Shakespeare mix -ups. stands up 
It stands yeah. up. That's stands why it's so it really wonderful. It yes. just really stands up. Uh, and Michael, do you have a favorite play? <sighs> My favorite Shakespeare is probably one of the least done Shakespeare's. Um, I love one of those kings. <laughs> uh, actually, no, uh, Comedy of Errors. Oh, Comedy um, of Errors. And I oh. think partially it's because it deals with two sets of twins. Finding two people that look enough alike that aren't actually twins is hard enough. You know, two sets is probably damn near impossible. So, yeah. Oh, um, that's I'd say, really I'd say, interesting. Yeah, I'd say that's one of my favorites just because it's, it's got this level of uh, the Twelfth Night's um, uh, kind of who's who and, and disguises and things um, and tomfoolery, but it goes to that next level. Um, just, uh, you know, with, again, the, the two sets of twins and the double mistake. Well, I'm going to have to reread that yeah, yeah, again. It's yeah, it's been one. a long yeah, time yeah. since I've read uh, some of those plays. So just, if I may, I saw you showing some of the pictures that yeah, we brought over. Yeah, let's talk about those. Yeah, um, yeah uh, the fellow's name is Tom Killips. Okay. Who does our photos for He's us. He's great. Every time, he is terrific. He is just fantastic. And um, you see the, the twins there in their outfits, and they are doing very well playing twins. It is hard, Michael, you're right, to find two people who look enough alike to, that you, they're believable. to get through it. Right, but we have a we have a. a well, they could be fraternal designer. twins. Right, no, and fraternal. that's often hey. that's what you see. You, you can, do you, see this. You know. My twin um, is taller than I am. Yes, he is. He is a little bit taller than yeah. you, but, but men do gravitate towards being a little taller than women. But yes. Um, but the, uh, that, that gives you a real flavor. When for can the they fun. see it? When can they? It opens August 31st. We do have the uh, Pay What You Will on August 30th, Thursday, right. August 30th. And it runs three weekends. Uh, Friday and Saturday shows are at 7.30. Uh, it's a change. They used to start at 8, but now we're starting yeah, Friday and Saturday at 7.30. Yeah, yep. yeah. And then Sunday shows are at 3. Yeah. So and this so is it's really September 16th. Located at what, 235 Second Avenue? Yep, Second, Second Avenue. Avenue. And Over. the website, you can go there, and uh, the phone number's right there, and call. Can they get tickets, tickets online? Uh, no. They nope. have to. You need to, you need to call and call, leave make a reservations. Yep. And you pick yep, them up. Yep, and you can make a reservation, and uh, yeah. So if you've never seen a Shakespeare play, I would suggest that you, you start out with this one because it's really fun and there's comedy and nobody gets killed. It's not like, it, I, I took a, a course in Shakespeare when I was in college and it says, I had this one test and it says, who was living at the end of the play? You know, was like, <laughs> that would be Hamlet, I think, yes. Yeah, it's the body count is up there for Hamlet, yes. And I think it was that one, yes. or Macbeth or one of those. Yep, yep, <laughs> I'm yep. sure what and the only other thing I will mention about Twelfth yes. Night is um, I would consider it, uh, by today's rating standards, PG-13. 13. 13 it is one of Shakespeare's more bawdy comedies. Oh, I love And that. we've played that up to the hills. Oh, good, good, good for so you. My cast is not shy. I'm <laughs> very happy to report, so. Good. So uh, check out, if you've never seen Shakespeare, want to introduce your kids to Shakespeare, take them to this, even 13, <laughs> 13 and above. And up. <laughs> 13 and above. I don't want to get angry letters. <laughs> 13 and up. PG-13. Check it out. Well, that should probably titillate you enough to come and see it anyway, right? <laughs> so, it would me. Yeah. Uh, Juliet King, we're always pleased to have her on. She's the director of The Twelfth Night over at Albany Civic Theater. And next to her, we have Jenny Pines. And then next to her, we have Michael Lake. And we're so pleased to have them on the show today and talk about it. And please say hello to everyone over there. You guys are, do. do such a great job. Thank you. Good.